Hi, I'm Ryan Griffiths from Cybex, and today on Cybex Says, we are talking about torque control. So, torque control. What is torque control? You've probably heard this thrown around so much uh, in different posts or on Facebook feeds, etc. Of, of, of ECUs doing it. There's not many aftermarket ECUs that actually do full torque control. I only actually think I know of two, uh, ours being one of them. Uh, what it basically is, years ago, you'd have basically a cable for your, for your throttle body. Okay, so you have a pedal inside the car and uh, a normal conventional butterfly that's on your, your engine. And that controls the amount of torque that you're requesting from the engine, the amount of airflow that you're allowing into the engine. We then got introduced to drive-by-wire, uh, and that was a big step forward in the industry. Then what happened was torque control. So where you've got these lively engines, these smaller or even larger engines, for example, it's probably more beneficial on, when you've got these engines that are making ridiculous amounts of torque at very low throttle opening, it was quite difficult for manufacturers to get them to actually drive quite smoothly. So if you get in your small daily car at the moment and you drive it, it probably feels lovely from an OEM manufacturer. And that's because they're generally running torque control. Now what that basically is, you have say a torque demand, so a target torque, and then you have a actual torque, okay? There are many other torques to it. So you've got, I don't want to blame your mind too much, but there's pumping losses, thermal efficiency, you've got available torque, which is all linked into the torque control strategy. But fundamentally for you guys wanting to learn about this, you've actually just basically got like a demanded torque and an actual. That's what you see most of the time when you're looking on your, say your VCDS, you're looking at for a Volkswagen, you're looking at the torques that are in there for a stock ECU, you'll see those mentioned. So what that basically means is you actually can then link your pedal input into the torque control to set a demanded torque when you're trying to pull away and drive. So you're basically telling the ECU, okay, I would like to make 100 newton meters of torque. And what it will then do is it will manipulate the ignition timing and the throttle to maintain that torque. Now, the reason why torque control is really good for this is because we actually have two types of torque intervention. You've got fast torque control and slow torque control. The slow torque control is linked into the drive-by-wire because it takes a time for the mass air to accumulate in your intake. And then you've got the fast torque control, which is generally linked into your ignition timing. So if you want to reduce torque quite dramatically, you can generally get up to about 40% of your torque of your engine reduced from timing. You can do that very quickly just by retarding the timing or interventing fuel cuts, etc. which can obviously, fuel cuts can you go up to 100% of the torque reduction. But the problem with those is they're not smooth. So what will generally will happen, the ignition timing will be retarded to, to pull the torque back, and then the throttle butterfly, the drive-by-wire, will intervene and slowly integrate down to the target that you've got set. Our latest versions of the firmware that's on the S7, S8, and S12 have that capability. Uh, firmware version 6, 9, 7 upwards have those and allow you now to manipulate the fast and slow torque control. So there are other reasons why it's really useful. It's not just the drivability. Because you basically now can actually target a set torque that you want for a given gear, you can maximize your tractive effort. So for a first gear, for example, you could say, okay, I want to make 400 newton meters. Second gear, I want 600. Third gear, I want 800, depending on how much torque your engine makes. The great thing about that is the torque control is kind of like a base for the amount of power you're gonna be putting down, or torque, should I say, to the ground. Then what you have on top of that is our advanced traction control strategy. So the torque control does the base of the start of the work in order to get it to maintain traction, so you don't put too much torque through the rear tire. And then if it does start to spin the tire, etc., the traction control sits on top of that because that's a reactive system, okay? So it reacts to a spin, etc., and links into the, the control. So that's basically what torque control is. Um, you do have then external gearbox controllers like dual clutch uh, that basically feed in on a gear shift how much torque they would like from the engine. So we deal with that. So that when you shift gear and the clutches are crossing over, basically as the clutch turns off and you've got a point where the engine is kind of free revving to a certain extent on certain parts, it will say, okay, I want to reduce the torque to say 50 Newton meters. You might have a very brief fuel cut, uh, Volkswagen cars, you might hear them, they have that kind of burble on a shift, uh, and that's just generally where the TCM has said, okay guys, I'm shifting gear, I need the torque reduced to 
say 100 newton meters and the ECU will do its job and our ECU does that on all of our kits uh, for the fruit of the McLaren, the Lamborghini, the R8, RS3, TTRS, all the way back to even the early E92 M3 stuff. We, we do that and we constantly look to improve it. We don't just say, oh, this is what we've got. We constantly look to, at ways of making it better, uh, to ultimately make it better for the, the dealers that are, are using it. If you like this content, uh, please uh, subscribe to check out more and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.